Hey guys, one more load of green tree to come down. And that'll all end up being the base for the uh, storage shed. That, uh, as you recall last fall, I tore down from the house and we're moving it to the cabin. I just have to cut off a foot of the rotted sill plate and then uh, rebuild it. So we'll see how complicated I can make this project. Kind of a warm one today. I got back from work kind of early today, so I uh, ski daddled over to Menards, picked up the makings for my base on my storage shed slash wood shed. And I'm not going to use sono tubes or anything. I'm going to just use these pier blocks or deck blocks because I might not like this location. So maybe a couple years down the line, I may want to move it.
So there's one beam. Now I'll complete this one and bring you all back. Here, just nailed the frame off to the uh, beams so it doesn't get the wigglies. And 10 by 16. And uh, I use 2 by 8s for the floor joists and 2 by 10s for those beams along with six by sixes for the posts. And then I got some three quarter inch treated for the flooring. Similar to what I did on the porch there. Okay, there's the deck for the uh, storage shed, or at least the main part of it. I think I've spent enough time outside now. I think what we're going to do is go on the inside here. I 
And this is why I need the storage, because I'm gonna have to move them cabinets out of there and that excess cedar there. To put in these uh, pocket door frames. There's one in the bathroom and then one in that utility room. Then I also got to put these in. These take the place of hurricane clips. Not that we have a whole lot of hurricanes in northern Minnesota. But uh, they'll go up in the rafters there and tie the rafters to the wall, top plates. These screws just go at a slight angle from the corner. These take the place of the metal clips that used to go around and down or the one-sided ones. But the, this won't interfere with your drywall or some of the other stuff that you put on your walls. Well, while I'm putzing around in here, I might as well uh, cut my overhang back to an inch. That way it gives me plenty of room to put a three-quarter inch board all the way around it. I think I'm going to put carpet upstairs, so then I'll be able to wrap carpet around that extra quarter. There, that looks a little more cleaned up. Hey guys, last weekend uh, I cut out the openings of these uh, pocket doors and then kind of ran out of time to mess around with it much. So, I'm back here at the cabin today. I'm going to try to get these uh, pocket doors in and leveled out and plumbed and set in place. First, the top has to go on. It just kind of slips in like that. door frame. Let me make sure head jam is level. And that looks pretty dang good there. Now we got the uh, pocket door 
frame installed. Later on when I decide what wood we're going to use for trim in here, we'll get the same for a jam here. That goes up into there. And then trim our uh, shims off. Now whatever I'm doing, whether it be drywall or what have you, we can rock this right up to this point. And then our trim will come across and a little trim piece in here. Now give us a finished opening. And then the pocket door will slide in. Not much of an opening, but uh, big enough for this little bathroom. And then the sink will go in there. A little shower in there. And a little toilet there. Got that one in earlier and just got this one in. They went in pretty easy once I figured out what I was doing again. I don't often put these in so I may have done six in the past. With that I think I will start making a video and I thank everybody for sticking around and watching these. Again everyone, thanks again and we'll see you on the next video.